are back on the show. Thank you very much for joining us on Kababayan today. We are reading an excerpt of Filipino Town Voices of Los Angeles. Carlene is reading a memorial to the Filipino World War II veterans and their struggle for justice. This is written by the son of one of the World War II veterans who also survived the Bataan Death March, and Enrique de la Cruz, who's been working for the veterans for a long time. The Los Angeles Memorial in historic Filipino town to World War II veterans is a bittersweet fruit, bitter because it marks a gain in what is still an ongoing struggle for recognition and justice over an act of betrayal committed more than six decades ago. Not so long ago, June 1997, Filipino World War II veterans went on a hunger strike while chained to the statue of General Douglas MacArthur at MacArthur Park, close to Filipino Town in Los Angeles, to, dem to dramatize their plight and call attention to their struggle. Shortly thereafter, I remember worriedly watching my father, who was in his mid-80s, himself a survivor of the Bataan Death March, board a plane for Washington, D.C., so he could join his fellow veterans for a demonstration in front of the White House to draw attention to the fact that they were unfairly denied recognition and now want what is due them, full recognition as U.S. World War II veterans with all the privileges and benefits that this country bestows upon those who serve in time of war. That's exactly what we were just talking exactly. about. Okay. Filipino Town, intro by our editor right here. And she says, in the 30s and 40s in California and elsewhere, Filipinos could not own property, have a business, or marry non-Filipinos, even though the ratio of Filipino men to Filipino women was about 15 to 1. Filipino Town by Greg Villanueva. In my 1940s world, where I never saw a Filipino woman, the future Filipino Town impact area ran from Main Street, taxi dance halls, pool halls, and barbershops through murky and creaking Bunker Hill apartments, celebrating quietly but grandly with clinking coins in Macintosh suits at the corner of Carioca Cafe on Figueroa. Then along that very special spine of Temple Street which bound us all together, past secluded upstairs rooms in houses of ill repute and fragrant live poultry and fruit markets and five and dime stores the dark, sticky, sweet-smelling Granada Theater at Temple and Baudry with two films and countless Mighty Mouse cartoons for 25 cents. There at Colton and Baudry was Holy Rosary Catholic Church and the open-air Martin's Market before they were disappeared and were relocated across the street by the new five-level interchange and the Harbor Freeway. During fiestas, these streets were filled with multicolored kids and families along with mariachi music, toss games, all kinds of food and confetti filled eggs. At night we sat on front porches listening to the radio <laughs> and watching hypnotized as the neon lights rose up and exploded atop Richfield Tower. In the morning we were awakened from all directions with countless roosters croning incessantly past active oil wells which punched through so many dirt-filled backyards down the backside western slope of Court Street to Glendale Boulevard. I don't remember any grass in any yards. <laughs> I do remember those ubiquitous green and red painted gourds and squatting Filipino men trying to grow bitter melon in gravel. Such a wonderful way of <laughs> describing your experience. Okay, Filipino Town, The Quest for a Spiritual Home by Lorenzo Paran III. In a book about Filipino Town, there should be a voice of at least one visitor, someone who hails from somewhere else, but who, finding himself there, knows he has arrived and not merely a stop or way station, but perhaps a destination. I'm not here, I'm not from here, nor can I claim to know that this place what this place is and who its citizens are. Just a few years ago, historic Filipino town to me was just a freeway sign, a <laughs> cultural tidbit, something that other Pinoys would mention in passing. 
Then, thanks to a mural, I found out. The 150-foot-long artwork by Eliseo Silva's first mural celebrates the watersheds and important figures of Philippine and Filipino-American history. Filipinos have had a long and undeniable history in this country. The center is us. But to this traveler, Filipino town holds a special place. Carlos Bolosan himself, an icon, a legend, is Filipino-American history. Walk some of these streets and haunted its bars and speakeasies. Not too far away is the Los Angeles Public Library where he practically lived. Filipino town continues to draw us in. It welcomes us and sustains us like a home. <laughs> Beautiful. This is a, uh, a wonderful letter written by uh, the author Noel Alamit at Tommy's Hamburgers. Okay. Before we read yeah. this letter <laughs> that was written at Tommy's Hamburgers by a Filipino, Noel Alumit, we'll go to break. When we return, we're going to read some more excerpts for you. We can, I can read this book all day long. <laughs> can we do that? Can yeah. we just do that all day long? Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back on Kabobai today.